Calculate the molecular or formula mass of each of the following. So first, what's the difference between molecular mass and formula mass? Well, remember that they're calculated the same way. The only difference is whether you're talking about a covalent compound, in which case we would be calculating the molecular mass, or you're talking about an ionic compound, in which case you'd be calculating the formula mass. Either way, you calculate them the same way. You add up the mass of each atom in the formula um, and add them all together, and that's either the molecular or formula mass, depending on the type of compound that you have. All right, so let's look at this first one. P4, so there's four phosphorus atoms. So let's bring up a periodic table here. Here's phosphorus. It has a mass, an atomic mass of 30.974. So phosphorus. Okay, so phosphorus has a molecular mass of 30.974. And we have four of them. So when we have four phosphorus atoms, we multiply the atomic mass of phosphorus by four, and we get 123.896 grams per mole. So one thing to notice is that when we're doing multiplication, even when we're using numbers from the periodic table, we still have to take into account the significant figures. So the rule for multiplication is that I can't have more significant figures in my answer than the numbers that I multiplied together. So this has five significant figures. So that means I'm only allowed to keep five significant figures on this side. So I have six, which means that I look to this first insignificant figure to determine uh, um, which, whether I round up or down. And in this case, I round up because six is greater than five. 123.896. Grams per mole. All right, let's take a look at this next one. H2O. So I have two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Hydrogen, according to my periodic table, is 1.008, and oxygen is 15.999. Okay, we have two hydrogens and one oxygen. So, All right, so I'm left with these numbers after I multiply by the number of atoms in the formula. So let's apply the rule for significant figures uh, for multiplication before I add these together. So um, in this number, I have four significant figures. 
and in the answer I have four significant figures, so that's okay. Um, here I didn't actually multiply by, by anything, multiply by one, so it just gives me the same thing. Okay, so I don't have to change the significant figures after multiplication. So now when I add these two together, um, the, I can't have any more um, numbers after the decimal place than the m least precise number in those that I'm adding together. So um, th remember the rules for um, addition and subtraction when I'm dealing with significant figures are different than the rules for multiplication. So one way to keep track of that is to draw a line right after your um, right after the uh, decimal place for the least significant number. In this case, both of these numbers have three numbers after the decimal place, 0 0.016 and 0.999. So um, when I add them together, eighteen point zero one five so in this case I had three uh, digits after the decimal place in my least significant number up here and I have three digits after the decimal place in my answer so that's uh, I have accounted for the significant figures in that one all right let's do this last one calcium uh, nitrogen and oxygen bring up our table Calcium is 40.078. My uh, decimal points don't show up very well sometimes on this program, so when I space the numbers apart like this, I try to put a decimal point in there. That's, that's what I'm doing there. There's a decimal point there, 40.078. Okay, nitrogen, 14.007. Oxygen, 15.999. Okay, I have one calcium, according to this formula. How many nitrogen are there? So there's one nitrogen in an NO3 unit, but this, um, expo or this subscript here is saying that I have two NO3 units. So if there's one nitrogen atom in each and I have two of them, then I have two nitrogen atoms. And how many oxygen atoms do we have? Well, this having this two on the outside of the parentheses is just like having uh, two on the outside of the parentheses in a math equation. I take that number and I distribute it into the parentheses. So remember the subscript on N is actually one. So I would multiply two times one and have two nitrogen atoms. And the subscript on oxygen is three. So I multiply two times three and I have six oxygen atoms. So it's important to be able to look at a chemical formula and determine how many of each atom you have. That's really how you um, find the formula mass. In this case, is the formula mass um, or the molar mass. You have to be able to interpret how many atoms there are in the formula. Okay, so we have 40.078. Point zero one four ninety five point nine nine four. These are all have units of grams per mole. Okay, so um, if we look at our um, significant figures after multiplication. I don't have to make any adjustments there, those are all fine. And now when I add these together, they all have three numbers after the decimal place, so I'll draw my line there to say I can't keep, if there are any numbers after I add these together, I can't keep any. So, let's see, I would go 9.94 plus 28.014 plus 40.078 equals 164.0. Zero eight six grams per mole. All right, so um, so 
Determine the number of atoms of zirconium, silicon, and oxygen found in 4.5669 grams of zircon. Here's the formula, and, which is a semi-precious stone. Okay, so um, let's think about um, our map that shows us how we get from one unit to another. So in this case, we're starting from grams. If I start from grams, what unit can I convert grams into? Well, if I have the molar mass, which is grams per mole, then I can convert grams into moles. And if we have moles, remember moles is like a dozen. If I have a dozen of something, I have 12. If I have a mole of something, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, Avogadro's number. So if I have moles, then I can use Avogadro's number to convert moles into number of molecules. or formula units. And remember, what's the difference? The only difference between molecules and formula units is whether I'm talking about a covalent compound that's made of nonmetals, or whether I'm talking about an ionic compound with a metal and a nonmetal. So they're really the same thing, they just have a different name. So once I have the number of molecules, or formula units, um, this would tell me, for example, if I have a dozen, uh, or if I have one dozen water molecules, then I would have 12 molecules, number of molecules, 12 H2O molecules. But it doesn't tell me how many atoms I have. Because remember that in H2O, there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. So if I have 12 water molecules, how many hydrogen atoms do I have? 24, because 12 times 2 is 24, so I would have 12, or excuse me, uh, 22, 24 hydrogen atoms. So there's one more step. After I know the number of molecules or formula units, I have to take it one step further and solve for, sorry, I ran out of room here, number of atoms. So this is going to be the scheme that we follow when we're trying to solve problems like this. And I can go backwards too. What if a question asks me, how many grams does 5.92 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold weigh? So if you're given a number of atoms and you're asked to convert it into grams, you would just follow the same scheme backwards. I'd go from number of atoms if I'm talking about gold, well, there is no such thing as a gold molecule because gold is just one atom, AU, at a time. It's an element. So if I have number of atoms and I'm talking about elements, I can just skip right over this and go to moles. This is for elements. And if I have moles, then I can convert moles to grams with molar mass. So I can use this scheme, and it's always, it always goes in the same order, grams to moles, moles to number of molecules or formula units, or if you're talking about elements, to number of atoms. And then from number of molecules or formula units, we can calculate how many atoms there are by taking account of all of the atoms within one molecule. So let's do this one so that you see what I mean. We're going to approach all of these problems the same way. Let's see what we're given here. This is the only number that I'm given. So we'll start here. 4.5669 grams. And it, when I'm talking about different substances here, I'm talking about um, zircon, which is ZrSiO4. But I'm also being asked to find the number of atoms of zirconium, silicon, and oxygen. So grams and atoms and molecules and units are just going to start flying around here and it's important that we attach a really um, clear label to our units so we know what we're talking about 
These are grams of zircon. And zircon is Z-R-S-I-O-4. So I have 4.5669 grams of Z-R-S-I-O-4. Uh, sorry, my R looks a little funny there. So these are all going to be unit conversion problems, just like in the last chapter, just like in chapter one. So when we're converting, when we're doing a unit conversion, we always start with the number, uh, the grams that were given in the numerator, and we have to put that same unit in the denominator so that they cancel. Z R S I O four. Um, and if I'm trying to follow this map that I've put up here, then I will put moles of Z R S I O four on top grams to moles. So what, how do I fill in these numbers? How do I know how many grams there are per mole of this? Well, I have to look at the periodic table and calculate the molar mass. So where is uh, zircon? Z-R, here it is, zirconium. 91.224. Um, silicon is right here, 28.085. And then oxygen is right here, 15.99 times four, there are four of them. So that's 63.996. And then this is for zircon, silicon, and oxygen. Now I add them all together. And we get 183.305 grams per mole. All right, so I put those numbers up here. 183.305. All right. So now that we have, we've filled in these numbers, after I make this calculation, my units will cancel. The units on top and bottom will cancel. So I'll be left with 0.0 moles of zircon, Z-R-S-I-O-4. All right, so I put my next conversion, because I'm not done yet. Once I have moles of ZrSiO4, moles of zircon, now I have to convert to um, molecules or formula units of zircon, because this is asking for the number of atoms, and I don't know how many atoms there are yet. Remember, if a mole is like a dozen and I have moles, I just know how many dozens I have. So I still have, I still have to go and do more conversions. So moles on top. Then in my next conversion, I put moles of zircon on the bottom, so they'll cancel. And if I have moles of zircon, the next unit that I can get to from this point is uh, molecules. I follow my map, fill it in up here. This will say Avogadro's number. So using Ad Avogadro's number, we can convert between moles and number of molecules, or vice versa, number of molecules to moles. So um, in one mole, there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, I should say 3, 23rd formula units. And I know that these are formula units because zircon is a metal, so the, this is an ionic compound. Formula units.
Okay, so like units will cancel. One mole of zircon on top will cancel with mole of zircon on bottom. So that unit cancels out. So now, after I do this math, I've converted from grams to moles and from moles to formula units. So now I know how many um, ionic molecules, that's what a formula unit is, how many particles of this ion I have. But this ion contains lots of atoms. It contains one atom of zircon, one atom of silicon, and four atoms of oxygen in every formula unit. So I still don't know how many atoms of zirconium I have. So the last conversion here, put one more conversion down. If I have formula units on top, then I have to put formula units on the bottom. Formula units, so that that will cancel. And what I'm trying to convert to, finally, is atoms. of zircon. So this is in one mole of ZrSiO4, I have some number of formula units of ZrSiO4. So this is still ZrSiO4. That's the formula that I'm talking about, this chemical formula. How many formula units of this do I have? So um, in one of these, when I have one ZrSiO4, how many atoms of Zr do I have? One. And really what I'm asking in another way is what is the subscript that is associated with Zr in this compound? That tells me for every one of them I have, how many atoms of Zr do I have? So remember, although we don't write the one, we know there's a one here, and there's a one here. So it's Zr1, Si1, O4. So when I have one formula unit of ZrSiO4, I have one atom of zircon. When I have one formula unit of ZrSiO4, I have one atom of Si, silicon. When I have one formula unit of ZrSiO4, I have four atoms of oxygen. So when I perform this calculation, I'll do the same exact calculation. I'll do the same exact calculation for all the atoms. 183.305 grams of zircon per mole. In one mole, there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23 formula units. And in one formula unit of ZrSiO4, there's one atom of Si.
Okay, so we would follow we would follow the same procedure, the same calculation for each of the atoms. So in this first one, I'm solving for zircon, and then here I'm solving for the number of silicon atoms, and down here I'm solving for the number of oxygen atoms. But these calculations are the same. We start from the same place, the number of grams of zircon that I have, and then I divide by the molar mass to convert grams to moles. I'm following along on my chart here, grams to moles. And then once I have moles, I convert moles to the number of formula units by multiplying by Avogadro's number. That's the same for all of them. And then the last step, after I have the number of molecules or formula units, then, I then I'm trying to convert to the number of atoms. Well, to do that, I just look at my formula, Zr1Si1O4. So I have one atom of zircon when I have one of these. I have one atom of silicon when I have one of these. And I have four atoms of oxygen when I have one of these. So the, cal the calculations are exactly the same until I get to the last step. And that makes sense because these first few steps are just telling me how many molecules or formula units of zircon do I have. And after I know that, I can say, okay, now I can figure out how many different parts there are. So another way to think about this is it's like, if I asked you, um, we're talking about uh, a car, and the, um, one, of the, one of the questions is, how many doors does it have? Well, first I'd have to figure out how many cars I had. And then here, once I knew how many cars I had, I say, well, each car has four doors. So when I have one car, I have four doors. So that's exactly like saying that's what we're doing here. This is, our, this is a thing that contains more than one part. A car has four doors. Well, a chemical formula has one atom of zircon, one atom of silicon, and four atoms of oxygen. So once I figure out how many of these I have, I have one more step to figure out how many atoms there are. So let's do these calculations. So we start with 4.566. Nine divided by one eight three point three zero five. So this tells me the number of moles, point zero two five moles. Now I multiply by Avogadro's number. And now I have formula units. I've gone from grams to moles. 0 0.025 moles, multiply by Avogadro's number, and now I have formula units, 1.5 times 10 to the 22 formula units, and now I multiply by 1, and that tells me how many atoms of zircon I have. So 1.5 times 10 to the 22 atoms Of zircon. I had five sig figs so I should keep five of these. 1.5003 one 1.5003. Okay, let's try the next one. Do the same calculation. So we would get the same number here, right? So I would get 1.5003 times 10 to the 22 atoms of silicon. Right, same number. Now, since I would get that number here, that's also the number of formula units, to calculate for the number of oxygen atoms, I can just multiply this by four. This is how many um, zircon atoms I have. So how many oxygen atoms do I have times four? 6.0013 6.0013 times 10 to the 22 atoms of silicon. 
times 10 to the 22 atoms of oxygen.